Hi guys. So I'm not an alarmist, but as a fellow gardener, if something is coming that's going to affect many of our gardens, I do have to let you know about it. If you've never been here before, my name is Marlene. Welcome to my home and garden channel. So this is actually coming this spring and it is called Cicada 2024. We're being told by entomologists, and those are the people who study insects, that this is going to be of biblical proportions. We're looking at invasions of maybe billions, possibly trillions of these insects. If you don't know what they are, I just showed you a few minutes ago what they look like, but they range anywhere from about 0.8 of an inch to two inches. So they're a pretty reasonable size. I did not touch it guys, I am not going to weird you out in this video. I just put my thumb close by so you could see the size of it to have an idea how big it is. Cicadas are found on every continent except Antarctica and this year is going to be unusual because if you're alive today you probably won't be alive for when it happens again in the next 221 years. So more details about cicadas. They actually are in broods or groups as they call them and cicadas they spend most of their life underground. Some of them spend a year under there, some two years, some 13 and some 17. And then when the soil temperature comes up to 64 degrees, then what happens is the nymphs or the immature adults, they come up to the surface and they go onto your plants. But what makes it different this year is that the 13 year brood and the 17 year brood are going to combine. This is only going to be in some areas of the United States. I will take a look at those as well. Or you can check your local listings to see what they tell you. So now let's take a look and see the type of plants that you don't have to worry about. So if you've been watching my channel for a while, you know that I love to grow tomatoes, especially beefsteak tomatoes like these ones right here. And I grow peppers, you know, pumpkin sometimes. I grow lots of beautiful flowers. And you may be concerned about these in your spring garden, but don't worry guys, they actually will not bother these plants. And the reason is that they don't chew on them. They're not like locusts, they're not like caterpillars and slugs and all the other ones that chew on the leaves. You may remember what happened over here last spring when I got, you know, some slugs and some um, caterpillars got on here. These cicadas, they actually have mouth parts that are similar to more like to a mosquito in the sense that they, they don't chew on stuff. They actually suck up the plant juices from the roots of some plants or from the branches that they land on. So you really don't have to worry about these. And that's a blessing right there. Now, in terms of the trees that they actually, you know, don't bother, that would be like your conifers, like these right here, you know, like pine, like spruce, you know, all the different ones that you grow, arborvitae, all those other ones that you grow for privacy or for hedging or just to be beautiful in your yard. They do not like these. So you don't have to worry about these types of trees. So, so let's take a look at the plants that you do need to be concerned about. So plants like your blueberries, bramble bushes like raspberries and blackberries. Yes, you definitely need to take those into consideration as well as certain types of trees. So let's take a look at those specific examples. So shrub type of plants like bramble type plants, you know, like blackberries, they like things like grapes. I um, mean, you can see how these are coming up very tender, very delicate, you know, how they're looking there with those um, little branches coming off. That is what they go for. And so I was going to go ahead and get a blueberry um, bush early spring, but I decided, you know what, let me just hold off a little bit until this passes because they come up and they mate. And that once that six week period has passed and they've gone that back down to get dormant in the ground, then, you know, they're not going to bother the plant. So at that point, you can go ahead and plant them. These are some raspberries right here, which is also another one that they do bother. For trees, this is a beautiful cherry tree right here, an ornamental cherry tree. They like plants like these and like, you know, your peach trees, plums and all of that. So, um, but there are ways around it though, which we'll take a look at. Um, if you haven't bought them, you can hold off a little bit. If you have already, don't worry, there's still ways around it. So don't worry too much about it. Plus you can maybe just keep them in the container they're in until that time passes and you can put them down in the ground. Like plant trees that they like also too are like maple and like oak, you know, plants like those, they'll go on the branches 
and they typically like branches that are anywhere from a quarter of an inch to about an inch or to half of an inch they lay the eggs in there and they make slits to do so and that causes the plant to get damaged and that's what weakens the trees so if you see like you know weaker branches you know on your older trees you can go in and cut the lower branches if you have like a mini um, chainsaw like this from Saker and I can link that in the description I will link it in the description box for you below if your plants are higher up you can use loppers like these which I'll also link in the description box you can just take off those branches that are a little bit higher you know so that you know the plant will have more strength to it now you may say what about using chemicals well you can use chemicals on them but it has to be very strong if it's not strong it's not going to work and if it's really really strong you know our wonderful pollinators that you're seeing here like our bees and our butterflies and so on it's gonna damage them and we really don't want that you know we'd prefer for them to you know be around to help us you know with our crops and our you know fruits veggies that we grow to pollinate those so that would not be my first option but it's something you get to think about as far as what kind of plants deter them you know like keep them away like thyme right here like one of them that i grew in my um, flower bed they don't like those this is another type of thyme again they don't like those either they also do not like eucalyptus so gardening with coffee you got a eucalyptus tree recently perfect timing they don't like it so you don't have to worry about it at all and also another thing that they don't like is they don't like mint and i think most likely it's the you know the oils that are in these plants they're very fragrant and they have certain type of you know healing properties to them too so i think that you know it repels them that's probably why it happens and i just wanted to say that you know i'd be so pleased if you would hit the subscribe button and tap the notification bell twice so you never miss an upload and thank you so much for joining with me on this so I don't know if the April solar eclipse has anything to do with any of this, but they did say they're coming out in biblical proportions. So I would just say, you know, that's kind of like a note to self. Next, my husband is going to show you, if you already have these plants, how you can protect them in your garden. So here are some of the things that you will need. And I'm just going to show you as an example, my little rose bush, you know, it went a little dormant during the winter for the most part and is springing up back very nicely. We'll just show you how you'd cover it. You basically want to have some kind of a netting, some kind of a net and make sure that it is strong enough and also that it's no, the poles are less than half of an inch so they can't pass through. This right here is actually a round bar that we got from our, um, our garden center and it's one eighth of an inch by 48 inches. And that's just you know what we prefer to use it's narrow enough and you can get something like that if you want if you have other you know types that you wanted to use and that's fine just make sure they're not too wide we, you'll also need like pruners if you wanted to trim off any lower you know, branches on there if clips work for you you can use those we have a tie wrap there are tie wraps are really good too of course gloves and pliers to bend the wire if you need to bend the wire just depends on what you're going to be using to kind of keep the mesh off so here my husband is going in and this is a very inexpensive way to do it you just go in and you bend it of course you want something that's very narrow and kind of pliable so you can work with it and he's using his hand right here but of course you can use pliers if you want to to bend it and you just shape it the way that you want and if you are liking this video so far be sure to give me a thumbs up it does help you know to give a good signal over to youtube so they can send it out to other people so they can get this information as well so he's going to go ahead and stick it in there once he has that measurement and make sure it doesn't go too close to the, um, the little trunk of the plant because that will kind of cause damage there so selectively choose a spot that's not too far but you know close enough and then you go ahead and cover with your mesh at your leisure and it's not just to throw it over the whole plant and we're showing you in a pot but this is basically if they're in a bed how you would do it you just want to go in and cover all the leaves and go in and cinch it right where the trunk is or the main stem like we did under here so you just tie it on there so they can crawl up from the soil into it and this is like a whole bag that you'd put over a whole shrub and make sure you check on your dimensions for it i will link it in the description box for you in case you wanted to get one of those and as far as the trees go what you can do is to get what is called tree tape and you basically put it about say four to six inches above the root of the plant and that way they can crawl up on it or crawl down after they've hatched out and go down in the soil. So it basically keeps them from going up and down on your plant, which is a plus. And if you're going to be mulching your plant at this time, which I usually recommend, make sure you back it off at least two inches from the trunk so it's not easy for them to crawl and get access up onto it.
So the last thing is, do these cicadas have any benefits to us? And yes, they do. The first one is that they provide food for wildlife. So like birds and other animals that feed on them, they provide food for them. Here's a beautiful blue jay. Um, different types of birds will eat them. So it's going to be saving you some money on bird seeds because they'll be coming less since they have all of those cicadas to feed on. Because they also burrow up through holes in the ground, they also help to aerate the soil. And believe it or not, guys, there are some people who actually eat them. I am not one of those persons. They actually have cicada recipes out there. So in your leisure time, you can always go and take a look at those. So I hope that this was helpful to you and I hope that you'll prepare for them if they're in your region of the country. And again, just take a look. You know, you can do all of your research to see where they're coming, when they're expected there and how you can best protect your garden. And I just want to say thank you to all of you so much who have subscribed to my channel and you've used my affiliate links. You know, you have watched my live videos, my short videos and all of those. And just take the necessary steps that I pointed out earlier now. And I certainly hope to see you in the next video. Happy gardening. Take care.